What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the No Cap Space. Tyler and Shawnee here, joined by a very special guest. It's only it's special guest only, really, here for another luxury tax. Maryland's Cheyenne Sellers. Cheyenne, we appreciate you for coming through to the No Cap Space. It's, it's get, get the horns out. Get the horns out. Get it out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cheyenne, uh, put, put, like, how, how has the summer been? I know y'all went to Croatia. We were just talking a little bit before this. I got a little summer trip in. T- how was the trip? Like, what what y'all get into? Um, yeah, it was really fun. We went over there. We played two games, and then we just spent the rest of the time just like exploring and you know seeing Croatia and how pretty it was. So that was pretty cool. What was the what was the coolest thing that you got to see while while y'all were out there? Mm, honestly, the water was like the best part. We went on like this boat. Mm-hmm. We got to jump in the water. It was so mm-hmm. nice. Yeah, sounds fire. So okay, because like. Everybody's getting to do these cool international trips. Like we saw USC and Notre Dame. They went to France. You know, like different teams going different places. Like, what's the basketball culture like overseas? And and what have you been able to take from those type of experiences? You know, I feel like it's just really physical. Um, you know, a lot of these girls are, you know, playing against older women like their whole life. It's not like just specific mm-hmm. age groups. So I feel uh-huh. like um, I mean, it's a little bit of the taste of like the international life, but I feel like they're just very fundamental people. Um, they're super nice. Um, so, I mean, I feel like it was overall just a great experience just to, you know, see it all. What's the food like? This is the important question. Is, mm. is, is the food. <laughs> what was the plates looking like? <laughs> honestly, it was different, but honestly, it like Croatia was, it was pretty good. I would say like, mm. it was pretty good. And the gelato was really good. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. Now yeah, there we go. Oh, so no, I was gonna say, up. like, are you are you a nuggets kind of girl? Like, oh, I get chicken tenders no matter what. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. I just, you know, what's the what's the palate? Your palate like? I'm not the most. I, I'm I'm not afraid to try stuff, but there's certain. There stuff we go. Here, but I'm <laughs> afraid to try stuff. I feel you. Yeah, you're okay. Me. Cool. Cool. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Sean. No, so just you know, kind of backing all the way up. Um, you know, you come from a basketball family, correct? Yes. And I'm going to let you go ahead and explain what what was going on in your household in terms of the hoops and how that influenced you getting into the game. Yeah, so my mom played all the way up through high school. Um, they didn't have college women's basketball back then. Mm. And then my dad went to Ohio State in Wisconsin and then played in the NBA for a little bit. And then my three older sisters all played basketball growing up. Two of them went to college for it. And, um, I mean, honestly, it was just basketball the entire time. Um, I just just followed my older sisters, really. Like, my parents really never, like, pushed it, like, upon us to, like, play basketball. But it kind of just happened. So um, it was a really cool experience. And I just got to be around older kids and learn a lot really fast. Okay, because I did see a story where it was kind of like, you know, a discussion in your household. Like, mom was like, no, they can play. And your dad was like, ah, all right. Like, I, I don't want to, like, <laughs> force the family business on them. So, like, how did they kind of manage that to where naturally all of their kids kind of just got into it? Like, what, what were they able to do to, like, foster a love for the game? But, like, you guys didn't feel like you were getting burnt out or overwhelmed by the sport, seeing that, like, you know, your parents had lengthy careers. Yeah, I think just one of the biggest things my parents were, like, really big on is, like, if you want to do it, that's fine. Like, love it and do it as much as you want. It didn't matter what you did. It could have been golf, hockey, whatever. But, like, if you were going to start it, you had to finish it. You couldn't Mm. – you can't start in October and then want to quit in November (laughs) when the season ends in April. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you were going to do that season, then you had to do the whole season. Now, if you wanted to stop after that season, that was a different story. But, like, during – you couldn't do that. So, I feel like that was, like, one of the biggest things of, like, do it if you love it. But if you don't love it, that's okay. You just have to figure something else out. Yeah, that's that's better than me. I had one soccer practice when I was a kid, and I realized I couldn't use my hands, and I quit on the spot. I wasn't – What? Feeling it. Yeah, I wasn't feeling soccer after just one. Oh, my gosh, Tyler. I didn't, no, I didn't make – I don't even know if I made it through the whole practice. So, you're <laughs> better than me on that one. Uh, I, I, am, I am interested, though, like, when – obviously like in the household you're balancing you know okay how how do you how do we handle basketball discourse almost in a way of like how we handle it for you it was there like a, a moment or maybe like a, a year in school where you were like okay now I'm taking this serious like I, I know I'm talented at it like what was the moment kind of clicked for you where it turned into yeah I really do love this sport in this way 
I think I honestly like always knew that I loved the sport. I feel like the moment like I realized like yeah I was kind of like decent was like in like seventh grade. I remember like we were playing a school and I had like thirty points and like. <laughs> <laughs> all the guys in my class and they were like how many points did you have how many points did you have and i was like 30 and they're like no you didn't no you didn't you're lying you're lying i'm like no i'm being so serious I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> more than you so yeah i feel like that was one of the moments but it was like i feel like i just really always had a passion for it yeah. What do the family games look like? Like who? Like y'all's horse games got to go crazy. Oh, crazy. Like I was there trash talk. Like it's just like because me and my brother aren't good and we trash talk. So like I imagine if everyone's good, it's yeah. It's like, be on fire. like I. And how do you divvy up the teams? How do you decide who's on who's team? <laughs> yeah, I need the full breakdown here. Like, um, <laughs> you know, we play a lot more like one on one and two on two. Mm. Um, and my mom's usually the ref, and it depends on who. You <laughs> It depends on what sister you're going against because sometimes it might take a turn and there might be like a little fight. Um, <laughs> but for the most part, um, I honestly like we just divvy it up like two of the oldest are like separated and two youngest are separated. Um, so that's usually how it goes. Did, did mom ever oh. have to hand out any texts? <laughs> <laughs> She wanted to. She wanted to. <laughs> I feel like mom being the ref has that. Like that's perfect. Like mom's not yeah. gonna play favorites. Mom loves everyone, but like mom's <laughs> gonna tell you, hey, not on my court. No, that's <laughs> who. Who's the best hooper? Go ahead and say it. Go ahead and say it. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you tried it. You tried I get it. I get it. Thanksgiving's coming up. You gotta go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I- I, I think that's so funny. I, I am interested though. Um, I think you, we, we were kind of talking about just briefly very before we started recording, but like you're going through and, and all college athletes really are going through such a unique period in college athletics where you guys are now more pro than ever with the, the introduction of NIL for you, as you, you know, obviously you have family members with especially your dad that has been pro and, and has gone through that. What has kind of been the the relationship there in, in the sense of just kind of navigating these these new waters and being essentially in in a way having to be a pro early on in your career? Um, I feel like you know I've always tried to keep the main thing the main thing. Um, Nil is a dangerous business. Mm. Um, I don't know. I, I feel a different way type about nil. I mean, money is greed. Um, mm. And depends on how you look at it. I mean, there's people that transfer for different reasons and all that stuff. And I think if you let the money become front and center, it's it's a different ball game. But if you're smart about it and you go to a school and you're very happy there and, you know, they give you NIL, I'd say just be smart about it. Mm-hmm. Um, they won't be there forever. You won't get – you only get four years. Um, some of us got less, so it's like – yeah, I mean, I would just be smart about it. Save your money. Don't go spending it on all that stuff. You ain't you ain't lying. <laughs> Boy, my refund checks were not spent wisely, so <laughs> I hear this. Um, but like, just kind of from a legacy perspective, because you mentioned your mom, you know, kind of had to stop early because she didn't have a choice. Like, what is it like for her to be able to see you, you know, play in college and then have like? aspirations like i can go here i can go here i can go here and then like new leagues are popping up here and there like there are just so many options for the future like what what is that like i think she's like super happy that she gets to see uh through me um i think she's just grateful um that you know god has blessed me with this ability um but i mean if you were to ask her right now she'd probably start crying so <laughs> um, <laughs> no, nah, that's big though. Like you know, getting to see your child go further than you because of the opportunities, and then like you hooping, because like that thirty points, set, I would cry in that seventh grade game. I'm not gonna hold you. Like my kid dropped thirty on somebody. Like it's over. I'm letting everyone. It's like, over. It's <laughs> over. Like yeah, <laughs> like no, nah, like you gotta feel me. Yeah. So no, nah, like but that that's super dope. And you know you do have those uh, professional aspirations, correct? Yes. Like, and what's that like for you? You know, just knowing that expansion is coming. They're, we're getting new teams. 
in you know both sexy cities and other cities but like you know there's there's options for you what is that like and like how are you navigating that you know um i'm really focused on this season um coming up mm, good answer good answer <laughs> <laughs> you know trying to put it my best foot forward and you know hopefully get blessed to get drafted i mean obviously everyone knows expansion is coming um but you know, that got waived this year that are just as hungry as I am, and you know it's just gonna be a battle. So, but I'm really focused on this year, honestly. Actually, on on an individual level, I guess for for this year, then um, what are obviously the, the team goals? I, I don't think need to be. Like, it's, it's I the aspiration is obviously championships. Like that is that is the goal, especially at a program like Maryland. For you on an individual level, uh, is is there certain aspects of your game maybe you, this summer that you really kind of focused on and or, or individual goals that you're looking to hit uh, throughout this season while also aspiring obviously for those team goals? Yeah, I mean just shooting better percentages, um, you know, hitting more wide open threes and stuff like mm-hmm. that, getting my three point percentage up. So that's really um, what I've been working on. Um, I feel like this year you guys will get to see me a lot more at the two and on the wing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's exciting. Yeah. Um, so it's just gonna be a fun year. I'm um, I'm interested. Uh, also, I yeah, I guess more general with with this one. You're a player that's been able to impact all over the stat sheet. Just that's just kind of natural, like the type of player that you are. And I'm interested because it's kind of been like this from the beginning. It's just kind of been more minutes as as it's gone by. Obviously, development has happened. For you, when you know like you are this all-around player, like there's some games you can go get 10 plus rebounds, there's some games you're nearing 10 assists. How how do you work on skills in like in the offseason? Are you are you harping on like one thing at a time? Is it working on like all around game? Like what is kind of your mindset and and how you try and add things to your bag on the court? I think I do a lot of perfecting of what I'm already good at. Mm. And then looking back on the stats in the season and seeing where I was short of my standard mm-hmm. and figuring out how we can create that and make that perfect. And, you know, just coming off drills and things like that, where I can like really hammer like the muscle memory of that. Yeah. And how do your parents play into that? Cause I know like they seem pretty good about like, you know, letting you choose your own path, letting you do you, but it's like they hooped. So I know they got a bag. So how do they kind of <laughs> navigate like helping you develop and like giving you tips and, and being able to, you know, guide you in certain aspects and then like letting you do you? Yeah, I mean, they really don't do much um, mm. in the offseason. Um, if anything, I would say, and I say this to everybody, like my parents aren't very much there for me in my physical game. They're more there for me in the emotional game. Mm. And, um just like, not, I wouldn't say reality check, but like just breaking things down, making things not as big as what they are. Um, I think that's where they really like helped me a lot, not just on my game. Absolutely. No, that's huge because it's more than basketball. And like we're seeing that lifestyle, it can get to you. It's a grind. So mm-hmm. that's like really huge. Yeah, a hundred percent. I, Cheyenne, I, I'm I'm gonna pivot just a little bit here because oh lord, very important that I I need to know uh, your thoughts on these Brenda Freeze dance videos. <laughs> I that's I'm just gonna, oh, here's the question, <laughs> right? Thoughts? Um, because <laughs> those started popping up, and we can kind of I'm interested in, in from your perspective on the portal aspect and everything, but just to begin with. The AI videos, like the first one that you saw, like what 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 is going on with these AI videos? I need I need to know what the reaction for you and the team was seeing these all over social media. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it was more like, dang, like I can't believe. <laughs> but you know, the fans loved them. The fans ate them up. So yeah. I mean, I. You know, don't fix what's it not work. Work, so. it, it was working. The I they were all over the place. Like so it was it was doing what they were supposed to do. It was everywhere, yeah. Um but she she's pretty tapped in, so this wasn't like a oh it's surprising that she did this. It's like, yeah, but, um, they've allowed her to have this technology. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
Because uh, that one game, uh, I forget. Y'all had a big win, and she was she had her jacket off and was spinning it. Like she gets turned up in a hurry. Yeah, no, she re- she really does. Do. Like it's, and I I love it to be honest. I was I thought it was hilarious. I was all for it. They really were everywhere. I am interested though, because obviously th- those coincided with with transfer portals and new additions that were coming in. Uh, for you, how how have you? Like seeing how the new additions that have come in throughout this summer, how have they kind of been able to settle in? Uh, and and how is the chemistry kind of growing as you guys have been able to, to get more time together as a team? You know, I'd say they have fit in perfect. Um, I think the team chemistry is like out of this world. Um, you know, obviously, like we're not perfect right now, we're still working through a couple of kinks, um, but. Honestly, like, super impressed with, like, the way, like, these new kids came in, willing to learn, like, unlearn all these habits that they learned at the other school mm-hmm. just to pick them up. And some of them are, you know, like, fifth years or in their fourth year, like, their true senior year. And that's tough when you've known something for three years, two years, and now you have to leave it all behind and pick up a new style. Um, but I think we've done a really, really good job, and we have a chance to be really, really good. Mm. And speaking of new additions, you got some new friends in your conference. Um, <laughs> what's the thoughts on that? And like, how do you prepare, you know, for, for those new teams and kind of the styles they're going to be bringing? Yeah, I, I think that the Big Ten is the best conference in the country. Mm, um, say it. <laughs> I mean, I'm an SEC girl, but like, say it anyway. Like, like I like that. Rep yours. Rep yours. <laughs> I think SEC is a lot more physical than the Big Ten, but, like, if we're talking about pace and getting up and down and being able to have to do everything where your bigs can't – Talk to them. Talk to them. Guard, then I feel like the Big Ten got the SEC beat. But the SEC, I would say, is more physical. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I like it. I like it. Yeah. But so – like- Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I, I got you distracted. I'm sorry. That was my fault. <laughs> it just means more sometimes. I had to get that out. You felt it like in our sternum. Like, yeah, yeah like, it, like. Let's let's go. But like, yeah, back to the original question of the additions to the Big Ten. Yeah, I think um, obviously adding UCLA, USC, Oregon, Washington. I think those are great additions. Um, obviously, the main topic people are talking about is USC and UCLA. Um, I didn't say it, but like, yeah, <laughs> I, didn't say it. I think it's great. I mean, um, it'll be a lot more competition. Um, it'll be exciting. It's these games are going to mean a lot more since you only have one home and away game. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Everybody wants so that one loss could really kill you in the when it comes to the Big Ten tournament. So um, it's going to be fun, though. Yeah, I can't wait. That Big Ten tournament is going to be crazy. By the time we get to that point of the season, like, and everyone's fully, man, yeah, I'm ready. That's <laughs> some real hoops. I can't, I'm, I'm getting excited already. I can't wait. Like, what's your, are you kind of excited for like the trap? Like, now we get to go to the West Coast sometimes. Yeah, we get to, you know, but LA. So, like, yeah. No, like there's first pros and cons to it. I mean, no, no disrespect to you know the Big Ten states, but you know, like going to <laughs> California versus Nebraska, like I. <laughs> yeah, um, unfortunately, I don't get to go to you. I don't get to go to LA this year. They ah. both come to us, ah. to Washington and Oregon. Um, so that'll be fun. I've been to Washington before, so. Um, It'll be cool, but I'm excited for everybody else to get to travel. I'm praying for them because I think they have to play on Fridays and Sundays. Oh, yeah. Pac-12 days. The old Pac-12 days. Yeah, so I think, um, I mean, it'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. You'll get to go to L.A. when you're in the W. So we'll get that that in in time. Uh, Yeah. Like see, it's it's all, it's all good. Uh, Shine, we don't we don't want to take up too much of your time, but I I did my last one personally. Shine, you're welcome. Follow up with whatever else you got, but for me, I'm just interested because obviously we we mentioned the new pieces, but also there's pieces like you that have been around at Maryland and and, and the standards at Maryland have been high for a minute now. I, I guess for me, I'm just interested from from your perspective. What what should fans be expecting 
from this team specifically that might be different from, from other teams, whether it be a mentality, a play style. I know you mentioned being more on the perimeter on, a, on an individual level. What should fans kind of be expecting to see from this team this season in just kind of a general sense? I think us getting back to like playing fast paced basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, truthfully, you can see a lot more rebounding. Um, we have a lot of more size and a lot more mm-hmm. people that are aggressive going to the rim. So I feel like that's something that you can really see us battling in now. Um, I feel like those are really the two main things. Um, I feel like um, maybe a little bit more consistent on the outside and on the inside, a lot more post presence. So I feel like those are like really the top three things I would say that you might be able to see that's a little bit different from last year. Okay. So this one is just, it's kind of a fun one. Uh, if you, if you'd like to answer it, but we got your uh, welcome to the Cheyenne Seller show when you dropped 30 in the seventh grade. What was your welcome to college basketball moment? Was it like, oh, this campus is actually pretty big. You got lost or like, was it at a practice? Like what was one where you're like, dang, yeah, I'm at the next level. Yeah, um, it was practice. I was guarding Ashley Wusu. Oh, I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do it. That's a ball. That's a hooper. And um, she like did like this in and out cross, and I stayed with her until I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you were with her until you weren't. Like <laughs> she like me out the way. She just uh, yeah, and took that. Uh-huh. Hand. It was gone. I was looking for the charge. They said no. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Look, that's a, that's a, look, there's there's plenty worse basketball players to get got by first. Yeah, like, Ashley's a hooper. So like, there's there's plenty worse stories out there. Like that is that's not bad at all. Like, <laughs> like you, you can, we can take that one. That's that's a cool one. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. That's that's exactly what I need. I need. <laughs> A perfect way to end it. Well, Cheyenne, thank you so much for your time. We're we're genuinely very excited to to see you lead this team this season, and and I'm very excited, especially about the perimeter aspect. I'm I'm ready. I'm gonna be we're gonna be tapped in. There's gonna be so many fun Big Ten games this season. So thank you again for for making the time. Thank you for having me. All right, perfect. Well, make sure you guys stay tapped into everything No Cap Space. Subscribe here on YouTube. You can find all the links down below, just in the description to socials, Substack, and we'll see you next time.